Hi guys, welcome back to Retrospect. Today I'm going to show you how I prepare a wood panel for a painting. Keep in mind that this is just how I like to prepare my wood panels. Your methods might be a little different, but this is how I do it. So the first thing you want to do is remove it from the wrapper. It's not very easy to paint on otherwise. The second thing you want to do is to sand it. I use a double-sided sanding block. I got this one at Home Depot, but they're pretty widely available. And you'll want to make sure to sand the edges and the corners as well as the front, just because I find that sometimes splinters can stick out and you don't want splinters. So once you've given it just a precursory sand, you'll want to prime it. I've been using Liquitex's clear gesso. I like to put just the bare minimum that I think it will take on the wood panel at first and then add more if I need it later. I find that if you put too much on, it can get kind of glumpy and clumpy. I also think that using a really soft fluffy brush is better than a coarse one because a coarse brush will leave raised brush strokes on your wood panel which can interfere with the smooth application of your paint. Once you've applied all the gesso thinly, wait for it to dry. Usually it takes anywhere between half an hour to an hour. There will be a coarse texture on the wood panel afterwards. That's because the gesso is kind of designed for work with pastels or oil paints. But using gouache means that you will be better suited with a smooth panel, so I like to sand it again. The second time I sand it, I really go in with a fine grit afterwards and make sure that I have a nice smooth surface. You should probably give your panel a wipe down with a lightly damp paper towel or something because there will be a lot of sand and sawdust left over on it. So the next part, I'm going to talk to you about some of the supplies you'll need when you begin painting. First thing you'll want is water. Water is very crucial when you're using gouache paint because it needs water to help increase fluidity. So I use two jars because the first jar is for the dirty brush and the second jar is so that you don't transfer paint colors into different paints. Then you'll want a paper towel or a clean rag or something. I've got this old ratty paper towel here to just blot off any excess moisture on the brush. The next thing you'll need is a palette. I also sometimes use yogurt lids if my palettes get too dirty. The next thing is brushes. I use Curry's house brand. They're green brushes, they're synthetic and they're short handle. They're good for watercolor and acrylic. I use a lot of really, really small brushes like double zeros, triple zeros, even ten zeros for all the small details and whatnot. I also like to keep a really bedraggled, scraggly brush in case, uh, in case I want to do like a hair texture or fur. It's good to have that handy. Then for the different kinds of paint I use. Mostly I use Turner's Acryl Gouache and their pastel gouache line is the same, just pastel colors. And well actually my new favorite is the Holbein Acryl Gouache. I find the color range is really good and the quality is really high. I also like to keep a large supply of white paint because I find that that's the paint that I go through the most quickly. This is really useful in lightening colors and tinting. I do also use Winsor Newton's regular gouache though I find the tubes a bit of a pain to open as they're metal and they get all twisted. And then I have a couple colors by Shinhan and their poster paint range, but I don't use them too often. Maybe once or twice when I need a specific color that I don't have in my other brands. Another thing that's handy is to have these little plastic pots that you can pre-mix your own colors. They keep them moist for a couple weeks I've had colors last, so it's good if you have a specific shade that you want to mix and you don't want to have to keep remixing and remixing it. Remix! And then you can use a palette knife for with potted paints. If you want nice clean edges on your wood panel like I often do, you can tape off the edges. I just use a 3M painter's tape. I like to use a ruler to really flatten down the edges because if you don't, sometimes it doesn't stick all the way and wet paint or whatever can creep through and give you a messy edge which kind of defeats the purpose of taping in the first place. So make sure your tape is applied nicely and then you should be good to go. Alright, well that's pretty much how I get started with my paintings. I'd love to hear from you guys if you have any different techniques that you use for working with wood panels or with gouache. So if you have any tips for me, leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have an excellent day. 
give it a thumbs up if you like this video, and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye!